seat is the, the whole body of the chair, it's like the heart. If you don't have a good seat, you'll waste many hours of hard work. Start by riving with a circular saw, lots of cuts, and then you get a chisel and you bash it all out. But you basically you chisel away all the, all the rough saw marks. The low point in the seat is for the hip bones and that's approximately here. In the old days they used to get a what they called a swarthy chap and a sack of clay and get him to sit in the clay and that was the imprint. Tricky to measure people's backsides. Then the next tool you use is a traversher. You can cheat um, in the carving stage and use a, an Arbitec blade on an angle grinder. And once I've done that, then it's ready to sand over. Once you've turned the leg, you put it through the bandsaw down to 30 mil and then the wedge is about 25 mil long and you bash that in. There was always normally a, a carpenter on a farm, you know, the estate carpenter. So he would have had a plentiful supply of, of elm and the wheelwright on the, you know, he'd also be in the village, would have curved sections of wood for the arms. Another tool that was used is an adz and that's another way of scooping out the seat. Hit it out, but because Elm's got such curly grain, it'll, you know, it can bounce off and hit you in the shins, as my apprentice found out one day. That's the first chair I ever made in 2010. I'm now on about 15, I think. This is what's called a goldsmith's chair, and it has spindles that come out through the arm up to the comb at the top. This is what's known as the comb and that's the last piece to go on the chair. Over here we have another style of chair which is based on a design from 1700-1750. It's called the Windsor Comeback Chair um, and this is my latest one which is supposed to be equine. It has um, horses hooves here, the seat is elm and that um, has a twisty curly grain which accepts spindles very well. It never splits. And the rest of it is English walnut, which is very silky to the touch and takes a lot of finishing and sanding. The comb here is supposed to have sort of like a racehorse's ears and this flexibility gives you comfort. This chair here is more of a bovine chair um, for maybe a, a dairyman wide as he is tall, sycamore spindles and walnut turnings on the bottom. Chairs are very useful things and these are designed to last 300 years um, and I think having somewhere comfortable to sit is probably more important than having a cupboard to put something in. Beautiful to look at, They're, they occupy a room, they have a presence. I buy a whole tree. I get them planked up on a wood miser. That's an oak burr, turned it into a clock. This is a burr oak box. Burrs are come in small sections, they're the outside of the tree, like a human scar tissue. So the bark's removed, it's almost like skin. That's the cambium layer, and, and there's the burr there where you see tiny sticks coming out when the tree's living low down on, on the main trunk. Well this is a piece of burr elm. Because the grain's all over the place it's extremely hard to work. There's always a price to pay for the workman where there's beauty in the wood. So if you had a straight grain piece of wood you could carve it very easily whereas this is very unforgiving and will take longer but the end result is wonderful, you know, absolutely wonderful. I'd been an architectural model maker before in Sydney and London, so I knew the sort of basics of using tools and proportion, reading drawings as well. So from there I taught myself and started on reclaimed pine, um, and then I bought a beech tree, and then in 2004 I bought my first oak, which turned out brown and very beautiful, uh, made a dining table and, and things went from there.
So a young tree will be very pale like that, and the, and then the old tree they get darker as they as they get older, more character, and, you know, with the scars of life, a bit like us really, you know. So this chair is all walnut, apart from the elm seat. Extremely silky, luxurious, fit for a queen. The great reward is when somebody's, you know, over the moon when you deliver something and it exceeds their expectations. And it's also very therapeutic work and it's nice to stand there and contemplate your wood and what you're going to do with it. And it's, it's comforting to know you've got that wood and also you walk the dog and you look at a tree and you think, will I ever get to work here? I don't know. Um, and then it'll blow over and you think there, there is someone up there helping you. Uh, so I have, uh, have a lovely sycamore tree that I'm looking forward to working in the next couple of years. It's a very old one. It used to stand by my workshop and there'd be a, a bull chaffinch singing in the tree on June mornings. Um, and that, that came down in a storm and uh, it's wonderful inside. Very beautiful grain. Very different, um, lots of character. So, watch this space. Hopefully, there'll be a table like this next year made out of that.